Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation. Why do I call this interesting? First of all, it's interesting because we have two variables and a single equation. And second, we're not necessarily looking for integer solutions. So it's, this is not a Diophantine equation. We are looking for real solutions. We could even look for complex solutions, right? Why not? So we're going to solve this problem in the generic sense. I'm also going to be showing you a graph at the end, which is, I think, also interesting. All right, let me know what you think. So we're going to do the following straightforward binomial theorem, right? The left-hand side is screaming, use the binomial theorem. Okay, let's use it. What is the binomial theorem? It allows you to expand a plus b to the power n. And you know the combinatorial coefficients, n choose 0, n choose 1, so on and so forth. Hopefully you know Pascal's triangle. The coefficients come from there. And for the fifth power, it's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And notice that there is a symmetry. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and expand it. And by the way, these are coefficients, but the powers also play a role. We start with the highest power of a and with the lowest power of a, which is a to the power 0, and the b is vice versa. So start with b to the 0 and go up. All right, so here's how it goes. a to the fifth power plus 5, so our coefficients come from the Pascal's triangle, 5a to the fourth b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10 a squared b cubed plus 5 a b to the fourth power plus b to the fifth power. And that is equal to a to the fifth plus b to the fifth. Now something to notice about binomial theorem, which is really cool, is I, I talked about the symmetry, but notice that if you look at the two terms with the same coefficients, you'll notice that the switches, um, uh, the powers of a and b are switched around. So 3, 2, 2, 3. Make sense? And their sum is always 5. So a lot of good properties of um, binomial theorem. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression because it looks very confusing, right? But don't worry, we're going to simplify this and make it very, very manageable. So first of all, a to the fifth and b to the fifth cancel out. That's nice. Leaving us a zero on the right-hand side. Let's, so let's rewrite this. 5a to the fourth b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10a squared b cubed plus 5a b to the fourth equals zero. It's always good to get zero on one side if you're trying to solve an equation because you can hopefully factor it and then set the factors equal to zero and you'll get a bunch of solutions from there. Okay? So far so good. Let's continue. So now we have four terms. So factoring by grouping makes sense because we don't have a common common factor. Well, maybe we do. We do have a common factor, but that's just 5ab. Is that going to help? It is, but I'm looking for something more than that. So let's go ahead and do the following. I want to group these two terms together because obviously they are symmetrical. And I want to factor out 5ab. Inside, I'm going to have a cubed plus b cubed. And everything else is going to be 10a squared b squared. By the way, you want to pick the greatest common factor, g, c, f. Okay? Then inside, we have a plus b equals zero. Now this is nice because what are you looking for if you're doing factoring by grouping? You're looking for common factors when you do the grouping. a cubed plus b cubed is sum of two cubes and it's factorable. How? We can factor it into a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. And the second piece just stays the same. All right. Now, we have a lot of common factors. First of all, a plus b, that is the first part, right? But not only that, because we have 5ab and 10a squared b squared, and obviously 10a squared b squared can be written as 5ab times 2ab, therefore it contains 5ab as a common factor. Isn't that great? So the common factor is 5ab times ab. I mean a plus b, what am I talking about? Okay, this confused me. So the common factor is 5ab times a plus b. All right, now, if we open up another parentheses, the other, uh, the stuff inside the parentheses is going to be a squared minus ab plus b squared plus 2ab. 2b or not 2b, it just didn't work. Anyways, so these are the factors, but let's simplify the third one. 5ab, a plus b, I can combine like terms, negative a, b, 
and 2ab make 1ab. So a squared plus ab plus b squared equals 0. Great. So our expression was completely factored. Okay. Let's go ahead and find the solutions that I'm also going to talk about an alternative way to approach this problem. Okay, obviously this is significant because there's another problem which deals with the fifth powers and seventh power. I believe I made a video on this. I can't remember exactly. I'm going to check it out. If I do find a video, then I'll share the links with you. All right, so we got all the factors, so everything should be good. And now we can go ahead and write the solutions. The first one tells us AB equals zero. And AB equals zero means either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. It could also be both, but we don't care, right? The second one gives us A plus B equals zero. And that just means B is equal to negative A or A is equal to negative B. You can express it in different ways. The third one, however, is very interesting because if you set a squared plus ab plus b squared equal to zero, you're not going to get any real solutions. And is that true? Yes. But how do you explain that, right? So let's go ahead and break it down. I can write this as a squared plus ab plus b squared over 4 plus 3b squared over 4 equals 0. Why did I do that? Because I want to take the first three terms here, and that is a perfect square. It is a plus b over 2 quantity squared. How did I know that? If you know completing the square, you know what I'm talking about. Plus, and the second piece can be expressed as root 3b over 2 quantity squared. Now, you're kind of looking at a sum of two squares being equal to 0. This is only going to happen if both of these numbers are equal to 0. And if a and b are not 0, which we already talked about, right? a equals 0 and b equals 0 case already covered. So we can simply assume that, hey, suppose a and b are different from 0, then we don't have any real solutions here, which means we have complex solutions. I can kind of talk about how the complex solutions are going to come about real quick. And then I also want to mention how we can look at it from a different angle. Anyways, real quick, here's what we can do. We can go ahead and isolate this like kind of uh, maybe, I don't know, write it like this. And then square rooting both sides, you know, we're going to get the following a plus b over two, but you have a negative expression on the right hand side if b is not zero. So you kind of have to use something like root 3 over b over 2i. And of course, this is going to be a plus minus, right? Because when you square, uh, uh, they're both going to work. And from here, you can kind of put the a and b together or separate and write a in terms of b or b in terms of a. But these are going to be non-real complex solutions. So here's another way to approach this problem. We have a plus b to the fifth equals a to the fifth plus b to the fifth. We can kind of bring down one of these fifth powers and then uh, factor uh, this as a difference of two fifth powers, and then kind of you'll find a common factor, so on and so forth. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're just going to finish up with that. The graph shows you a relationship between x and y. In this case, x is represented by a, and or x represents a, and y represents b. Notice that we got a bunch of interesting solutions. First of all, k comma negative a. What does that mean? It just means that x plus y is equal to 0 or a plus b is equal to 0. Remember, that was one of the solutions we looked at. And that is the line y equals negative x. But notice that by changing this slider, it's obviously just a screenshot, uh, you can get infinitely many values. And the other ones. The y-axis, x equals 0 represents the y-axis, y equals 0 represents the x-axis, and those are going to be the only, only real solutions. Thank you for watching. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.